Let's say you have the cash to splash and you're looking to pick up the best of the bunch when it comes to Android smartphones. The two heaviest hitters are these, the Google Pixel 8 Pro and the Samsung Galaxy S23 Ultra. $200 separates these bad boys, so is it money well spent with the Samsung or should you save yourself some cash for the holidays and go with the Pixel? I'm Ryan Thomas with Android Police and let's talk about that. Straight away, these phones feel world class. They're both beastly things with huge displays and are chock full of bleeding edge hardware. So fill out their metal and glass bodies. The S23 Ultra comes in almost 10% heavier at 234 grams versus 213 grams with the Pixel 8 Pro, but I honestly didn't feel a huge difference in my hands. They're both very well weighted and more or less 50-50 balanced. The more obvious issue to me was that the Pixel 8 Pro was harder to get in and out of my pocket with that big camera bar compared to Samsung's more subtle camera rings. That said, you're gonna need substantial pockets for either of these to fit. Both are IP68 rated and both have aluminium frames with Gorilla Glass Victus 2 on both the front and the back. The looks are, as always, subjective. Google's design is softer, rounder and friendlier, whereas Samsung went with a hard-edged, no-frills rectangle. And I personally prefer the S23 Ultra's squared off corners, but I am a sucker for that blue shade on the back of the Pixel. Both have satisfyingly clicky buttons and feel extremely well put together, though the S23 Ultra pulls ahead with its speakers. They are just louder and clearer, in my opinion, compared to the Pixel 8 Pro. One of the biggest differences between these two is that one little feature that the Samsung has, the S Pen. I know people who rave about the S Pen and won't buy a phone without one. It's useful for marking up screenshots and for photos, but also signing documents. It's one of the easiest ways to do it on mobile. And of course, has one of the best fidget toys going. No, but seriously, it can be extremely useful, but then there are also people out there who will never take it out of their phone. So it's gonna come down to whichever you personally prefer. However, I personally very much value having that option in a pinch. More objectively, the Pixel 8 Pro's haptic felt a touch tighter, aiding in a more polished package, and its slightly less slippery coating on the back makes it a bit more manageable, but both are fairly slippery. You're gonna wanna put a case or a skin on either of these to keep them from slipping out of your hand. And because they are so huge, neither one is an easy handset to use one-handed. And you're gonna to wanna to protect those gorgeous displays because oh, I have not used a smartphone whose display comes close to these two behemoths. These Quad HD Plus 120Hz OLED panels are something else. The S23 Ultra has the Pixel 8 Pro beaten in size, but only by 0.1 of an inch. And though both are rated for crazy high brightness levels, in my personal testing, the Pixel 8 Pro got a hair brighter in peak brightness in HDR mode, but in person, I felt like the S23 Ultra's panel seemed brighter. I think that's due to the more contrasty color profile out of the box. Either way, these are two of the best screens for watching videos, films, playing games, taking photos even, because they're just incredible. They balance epic sharpness, brightness, and refresh rate. I don't think you're gonna be disappointed with whichever one you pick. Right, onto the details. I'm gonna lay out the specs right here in front of you so you can pause and take a look for yourself. But when it comes down to it, they're just both monsters. The S23 Ultra's performance chops beat out the Pixel 8 Pros, but I'd argue all three camera sensors on the back of the Pixel work out to be better balanced. They both come with up to a terabyte of storage, though Samsung has more space at its base spec and faster flash. Both have very similar battery capacities as well and trade blows up and down the spec sheets. Now, if you run performance benchmarks on these phones, the Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 equipped S23 Ultra is going to come out on top. It's a stronger chip in CPU performance, both in single core and multi-core, and it's the same story when you move over to graphics testing. The S23 Ultra really does pull ahead in these. When we move over to actually gaming, the S23 Ultra is clearly faster and is able to sustain higher frame rates for longer in intensive 3D titles like Genshin Impact, Grid Autosport, that kind of thing. And sure, this does give you a more seamless and stutter-free experience with the Samsung where the Pixel can hiccup a bit. But the Pro is still really good, even for gaming. It just doesn't look as good compared to the S23 Ultra. You're still going to be able to play 3D titles, no problem. There might be 
a few small hitches here and there, but they're few and far between. As for cell signal quality, I was a bit of a nerd and went proper test mode on this one. People told me that they could hear me slightly better with the S23 Ultra, though both were pretty good with their mics, and testing both phones' Wi-Fi speeds on my home network, they were pretty neck and neck the entire time. When using the phones day to day, browsing social media, uploading photos, downloading apps, that kind of thing, both phones were so well equipped that you know I wouldn't worry whichever one you go with, just disregard those benchmark scores. They're both lightning fast, neither are gonna lag or hiccup, and they should hold on to their speed for another two or three years because they're already ahead of the game as it is. The only phone that's faster is that iPhone 15 Pro. Despite their very similar sized batteries, the S23 Ultra does pull ahead of the Pixel 8 when it comes to battery life. Now, both phones can be a two day phone if you want them to be, but the Galaxy just finds it easier. I don't have to adjust brightness as much or close apps as often to keep the thing going a bit longer. I think Samsung's background process management is helping here in this regard, though it could well be Qualcomm's efficiency leapfrogging Google's here. And while both charge pretty quickly over a wire and wirelessly, if you fancy it, they both require you to buy a compatible brick. And if you do so, the S23 Ultra will charge a bit quicker over a wire at an advertised 65% in half hour versus a 50% in half hour with the Pixel 8 Pro. But the headline features of these phones, the things you've been waiting to hear about are the cameras. These are the cream of the crop in the world of smartphone photography. And I for one adore this section of the video because I get to play with uber cool cameras. Let's look at the hardware. Samsung is packing a slightly larger sensor with four times the resolution for its main camera. And though the Pixel's telephoto sensor is larger and higher resolution, the S23 Ultra's periscope is twice as long. Zooming all the way out to the ultra wide, the Pixel's 48 megapixel camera has a wider field of view and a more open aperture on top of that much higher resolution. But Samsung has an in-between camera for roughly three times optical zoom with a pretty small sensor to go with. And whilst the Galaxy can shoot up to 8K at 30p, the Pixel 8 Pro has to make do with Ultra HD 4K at 60 for its maxed out mode. Up front, the Samsung has a higher resolution selfie shooter, but the Pixel has a wider field of view to fit more of your friends in the frame. But what does all of this stuff translate to in the real world? Well, it's closer from a technical point of view than you might think. Across the board, you're getting a solid set of shooters on both phones. The Pixel 8 Pro captures a more accurate, true to life, sometimes more boring image, but one that I personally prefer. The colors are more neutral, the contrast is more natural, and the white balance was far more accurate with the Pixel over the Galaxy. Whilst at a glance, Samsung's strong sharpness post-processing makes images look more detailed, when you zoom in, you'll notice that actually the Pixel does often come out on top in this regard. Just look at this railing and how it doesn't look present in the Samsung's image, but it's clearly there in the Pixels. Of course, the S23 Ultra can reach further and when you go for something like 20 or 30 times, Samsung's hardware starts to make more sense. And if you are particularly fond of photographing the moon, there's no competition. The Pixel 8 Pro actually quite struggled compared to the Samsung in my testing so Samsung beats it on moon pics. For those nighttime photographers out there, this is where I got the most mixed results. I think the Pixel 8 Pro is still the more natural when it comes to color, but I actually preferred Samsung's images most of the time due to the crisper contrast. It's not afraid to drop the black levels down, even in this night mode where pixels tend to kind of lift the image so that everything is more visible. As is consistent with my prior experience of these phone makers systems, I find the Pixel 8 Pro to sell the effect of portrait mode a bit better than the S23 Ultra. Both are pretty accurate when it comes to hair and fur, though won't nail the cutout every single time, but Samsung tends to create a less realistic outline with a harsher contrast on the subjects to the background compared to the Pixel 8 Pro's more natural focus roll off, which is more in line with what you get with a real world bokeh with a larger sensor, and a fast lens. And this is true of both the front and the back cameras. Samsung's crunchy sharpness filter is back at it again in video mode. Both phones capture pretty smooth, pretty sharp video with the 60 FPS option available in Ultra HD should you want it. But the Pixel again does the best at capturing what my eyes saw when capturing the moment. 
Despite it not looking as cool or as vivid or as dynamic as the Samsung, which might be the look that you're after personally. So both of these phones are running Android 14. It's just that the S23 Ultra has Samsung's One UI 6 software skin and Google has Pixel Experience on the 8 Pro. So both sides have their own respective strengths. Google has its super useful magic eraser and audio eraser, along with its top shot camera modes. These are things that I use fairly often and are actually quite useful. However, Samsung makes better use of its bigger screen, not only by giving you the S Pen, but also by creating denser menus for filling out that screen more. The S23 Ultra's edge panels can also come in really handy if you want to keep shortcuts pinned to your display. I prefer the S23 Ultra's camera layout, and that is of course a subjective opinion, but Google software just, it looks clean, but it looks a little dumbed down, a little basic. And the bubbly aesthetic, while friendly, doesn't make the best use of its space. Google has made a promise to support its Pixel 8 Pro until 2030, whereas Samsung says it will keep its S23 Ultra updated until 2027. So if you are the type to hold onto your phone for over four years, you might wanna pick up the Pixel. Otherwise, Samsung is supporting its phone for long enough that I wouldn't worry about it. I mean, four years ago, that was the Galaxy S10. So we've come a long way since then. Look, if I have to give an out and out winner, it's hard not to give it to the S23 Ultra. It's still ahead of the Pixel, and to be fair, it does cost 20% more, so it kind of should be. It uses the large size better, has a more comprehensive camera suite, lasts longer on a charge, can game at higher frame rates, and of course has that S Pen. With that said, the Pixel 8 Pro is a definite contender for the flagship space. And if you want to save a buck, or you really don't care about the S Pen and the graphics performance, go for the Pixel 8 Pro, it's a no-brainer. Oh, and that blue color is just to die for. Which of these would you pick? Let us know in the comments. And that's it from me guys, thank you all so much for watching, hit that like button if you liked today's content, and subscribe to never miss an upload like this. I've been Ryan Thomas with Android Police, and I'll catch you later. Cheers.